This feels perfect. A wireless mouse and it feels absolutely spot on. Hello everybody and welcome to another video by Flash Jazz Cat. Now this video concerns a very interesting little parcel I received this morning. Um, I was told it was on its way about a month ago or a few weeks ago. Forgot all about it. Uh, but when it turned up this morning, I immediately knew what it was and I could not wait to try it out. I'll show you in a minute what it is. Uh, before we do that, I want to preface this video by saying uh, that you can now find my videos on Odyssey. That's O-D-Y-S-E-E dot -E com, uh, which is an alternative video hosting platform. It's very, very nice indeed. And uh, I've been able to export the entire library over there as well so you can now use uh, YouTube or Odyssey. Now you may know that I wrote a, a graphical operating system, a multitasking uh, graphical operating system, kind of a proof of concept if you will. It's not usable in a practical sense yet and I haven't had time to work on it for a number of years but every now and again something happens that just relights that fire a little bit, just generates that little spark of interest. Because of this little parcel I'm kind of looking forward to getting back to work uh, on the graphical operating system. So we'll go over to the desk and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So what was it that I received in the post that caused so much uh, excitement? Well it's this, it's the Mouster, uh, which is a universal USB HID class device to DB9 adapter. And you can see from the, the lettering there that it's uh, a bit of a giveaway as to what the intended uh, target is, but it does work with other things. Uh, URL there we can visit uh, to read more about it and a QR code uh, Insert USB -B pen drive for manual. I don't quite know what that means at the moment um, Because you obviously need some power um, I'm assuming this dumps something onto the other um, USB device. I'm not too sure yet. I'm sure we'll find out. So I was promised this some weeks ago by uh, a gentleman uh, named Pete also known as Drygol uh, of Atari fan magazine fame and uh, he said he was going to send this across and I told him I would do a video about it when it arrived uh, and I was very interested in the idea of a USB mouse adapter because of course I thought I could use it with the graphical OS uh, amongst other things uh, so here it is anyway so let's get it out of the bag and we'll have a look all right, here we are. So this is the Mouster. So it's a, a DB9 connector on one end, female DB9 connector, and a female USB connector on the other end, USB 2 by the look of it. And uh, all the electronics on the underside here. And it's kind of, it's packaging, that's actually quite nice. It's just shrink wrapped uh, at the moment. And uh, it's quite sturdy. So uh, let's head over to the uh, website and uh, figure out what this actually allows you to do. All right, so here we are at the Mouster page on retrohacks.net. And uh, the Mouster project is here. And this was posted on January the 19th, 2021 by Drygol himself, or one adapter to rule them all. Now there have been a few uh, Atari ST uh, USB mouse adapters or peripheral adapters in the past. Uh, one that springs to mind, I think it was called Pest, P-E-S-T. -E um, I, I never had one, I've never seen one, I don't know anything about it, never tried one before. Uh, I think there are a few other USB peripheral adapters as well. And uh, anyway, so it says that the Monster project was initially described in one of my previous posts as an adapter that will support multiple retro computers. So it's not just targeting the Atari or the ST or whatever, It's a, this is a a kind of a one-fits-all solution by the looks of it. Uh, this is a device that allows connecting any USB, uh, not PS2 protocol type only. So that was, a, I think that was a, a limiting factor previously with some of these things. It was only certain USB uh, devices that would actually work to as many old computers as possible. So that's quite ambitious. So the testing batch in midsummer, Willie Lamers had managed to manufacture a small testing batch and brought it over to me so that I could start testing and we've started a rather lengthy process of correcting firmware issues so you can see a lot of these things lying on the desk being tested etc etc so this is the adapter in an ST being tested with some 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 very exciting music going on so 
So if we skip ahead, he's using the there. He's using the mouse, and we can see that it works. And that's a that's obviously a cable mouse. I wonder if it works with wireless mouse. That uh, that would be quite good. Uh, they talk a bit about the housing. I think the the, the fact it's sort of shrink wrapped in um, shrink tubing, transparent shrink tubing, is not how it was meant to be, but uh, that's how it is. I think it looks fine anyway. And they've started to produce them, and they presumably they're they'll be on sale. Uh, currently, this thing supports the. Atari ST, Atari Falcon, Amiga and Amiga 2000, what we didn't test yet but which should work, Amiga, 8-bit Atari and Commodore 64. So this is quite a bold claim, it also supports nearly all USB flash drives, PlayStation 4 controller and nearly every USB mouse. For obvious reasons all these mouse devices with lots of LEDs and a bit additional electronics might not work due to the current due to the poor current output of DB9 ports in old computers. The first production batch was of 220 units and we're making preparations for a fresh batch very soon. What is this thing actually like to use? I think what we'll do is we'll plug it in and find out. Right, so let's test this uh, device. Um, I'm going to use this nice uh, Atari 600XL, which doesn't belong to me, um, but it's got a Sophia 2 fitted to it. So the video quality is going to be really nice. It's a lovely machine. These, some of these uh, 600XLs have been coming in. Wow, really nice. And we're going to use this, a Microsoft optical mouse, which I've had for years. I don't use it now really, uh, but it's a sort of a fallback mouse just for diagnostics when I'm fixing PCs and such. So let's plug that in. So I've plugged the uh, adapter into uh, port 2 here because that's the where the graphical OS expects it to be. So as you can see I haven't got a lot of room here for a mouse um, far from ideal but anyway let's switch it on and I've got the thing set to boot straight to the graphical operating system on the ultimate one megabyte that's built in here. We get a little bit of flashing light activity or we did anyway uh, when it turns on and it flashed again there. Is it good that it does that? I don't know. Sometimes I think I should tell somebody, but other times I just look away. So do we have mouse movement? Oh, we do, but it's very... Oh, it didn't half jump there. This is pretty... It's pretty sensitive, this one, actually. It seems to want to... Oh, I hate wired mice. Bloody hate them now. But it does appear to work. It seems to go very, very rapidly to the left and not so rapidly to the right, so I don't know why that is on this particular mouse. Uh, it, it is said that it, the uh, Atari 8-bit compatibility isn't actually finished yet, or fully implemented, um, but it seems to go very, very quickly to the left and up, and not so quickly... That's bizarre. Let's try and untangle these wires a bit. Um, but I mean it does work, it's just bizarre that it it keeps wanting to go back to the top corner all the time. Um, let's see if the buttons work, if we can... There we go, there's not much that actually does anything here. Uh, let's start that. Oh well it did work, the buttons work. And we can drag stuff. We can drag very rapidly to the left but not so rapidly to the right. I don't know why it would um, want to move it's like the DPI is higher in the left and up direction than it is when it's going in the opposite direction. That's quite strange. I wonder if it's a peculiarity of this mouse. I'm not too sure. Um, it doesn't feel too comfortable to use. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll try a... Well, let's try a wireless mouse. So I'm going to try this one. This is the brand new uh, Logitech wireless mouse straight out of the box. Uh, plug this adapter in, see what sort of beep codes we get, or flashing light codes rather. Get something on the screen. This monitor just takes a long time to sync to uh, DVI for some reason, I don't know why. Right, so let's see how this one feels. I'll try and move this computer along a little bit, give myself a bit more room. I've got some room to manoeuvre. Now, ah, now that's weird. This feels absolutely fine. This feels perfect. A wireless mouse, and it feels absolutely spot on. 
it doesn't there isn't there's no bias in any particular direction I can move it around now the mouse here it's um it's sampled pulled at about one kilohertz I think uh, so like a thousand samples a second and it's also got software acceleration built into it as well which is particularly helpful with the older style of mouse uh, which can be rather sluggish uh, but this feels absolutely perfect it just feels right just the the travel on it and everything is just absolutely great and of course we've got no horrible wires anywhere i can't believe it works with this wireless mouse and it works great let's try the buttons anyway profiler open a couple of applications open another profile it just oh it's just so smooth this actually feels as good as um mouse emulation in uh, say altera or something oh it's just it's absolutely spot on i can't believe that uh, but it, it didn't seem to like the uh, wired mouse quite so much because it had that weird bias it always wanted to go home in the top corner for some reason so i don't know why it would work better with this one maybe it is something to do with the dpi but that's just out of the box that just works beautifully right so i'm not sure why this particular mouse uh, didn't work quite so well with this it's a bit of an unfair test in a way because really i should set up an st on the desk i'm not really geared up to do this do that right at this moment in time uh, it may have had something to do with the sampling speed uh, this is running at uh, one kilohertz sampling um, I don't know uh, it just seems odd that this mouse which is 10 years more recent and more modern than this one this works better than this one on the 8-bit Atari but um, as I say it's I can't really draw any concrete conclusions about that until I plug the thing into an ST and see how it behaves there or an Amiga. I have a very very limited space on this desk and uh, it would be a half hour operation just to set up an ST. As I say the fact I could just take this out of the fresh packaging a brand new uh, M171 Logitech mouse it's quite very cheap optical mouse and just plug it in and just have a great experience and uh, the, the thing was that uh, subsequent to testing this um, I emailed Pete uh, just to tell him that uh, it did work very well out of the box with the 8-bit uh, Atari and he seemed to imply that the 8-bit Atari wasn't even supported yet it was waiting for a new a firmware update on the device but maybe I don't know maybe he didn't appreciate that this drove the mouse as if it was an ST mouse because the whole philosophy of this operating system is that it doesn't need things like uh, for instance it does software acceleration when you move um, a certain rate in one direction you know when you start to push the mouse harder uh, it actually doubles up the um, the movement it just gets you across the screen that much quicker and it feels very natural actually uh, just the way I managed to code it it just feels right to me even when you're using a a nasty Atari ST mouse or, or you know an aftermarket replacement but it doesn't depend on things like I think uh, Mitex PS2 mouse adapter for example it's got hardware acceleration built into it if you like so that would make the software acceleration built into this driver uh, redundant but I mean ultimately you'll be able to turn the software acceleration off so it doesn't preclude any fancier uh, input device but it bases it it's built for 128k Atari and a stock mouse uh, but what I did ask him about straight away is right right mouse button support because this will support the right mouse button and to get that to work with an ST mouse or compatible uh, you just have to put a resistor in somewhere between two pins and then you can sense the right mouse button by uh, reading the difference on the on the paddle register I think it is so if this device was able to emulate that behavior which I'm, I'm going to take it for granted that it doesn't at the moment uh, because I haven't even coded up right mouse button support in this yet um, it would be very useful if it did and she seems open-minded uh, about that and actually got a reply from Vili as well who's working on the firmware and he told me that he's working on Commodore 64 support and Atari 8-bit support and what he's actually going to do for optimal oper operation on these 8-bit machines is to have an absolute coordinate system so with uh, standard mouse the way it's working at the moment it's, it's what they call grey code 
and it just it's registering the the differences in um, the movement in a particular direction without a, a specific coordinate system uh, whereas if you have a coordinate system uh, you can just pull the the input and it'll tell you well the mouse is currently here or it's currently down here but the way it works at the moment is constantly reading the port because if you don't read the port quickly enough your uh, the transitions on the bits and the grey code just don't make sense you have to read them quickly enough so that you can sense the uh, the directional change which is going on so if you don't read the um, register quickly enough what you'll find is when you move the mouse very quickly it'll backtrack it'll jump back and it'll just lose track of which direction it's going in so the software acceleration that's built into this not only does it make it feel better but it actually prevents you from it discourages you from moving the mouse too quickly in any particular direction because you're naturally deterred from doing so because it speeds up um, so it works out nicely in both ways but the overhead of this particular method the polling grey code method I think I worked out it's only about 60,000 cycles a second I think if that 40 or 50 maybe when the mouse isn't moving because it's just re it's entering the interrupt reading the register seeing that the bits didn't change and then it's coming straight back out again so it's not really a high overhead so if you're really stuck for CPU time and every cycle counts then an absolute coordinate system um, for the mouse would be very useful indeed so that would just you'd just be able to see where's the mouse point at the moment oh it's you know 200 uh, by 100 and just plot the mouse where it needs to be without constantly pulling the register but yeah that's the stuff they're working on and uh, he also said that he's interested in adding right mouse button support and I think these retail for 25 euros I think it is thereabouts and I can't really say anything bad about it at the moment just not having to fight with the mouse the clunky mouse with the wire hanging out the back in a, in a very cramped area it makes you want to use this and it makes me want to actually continue with it because I can see what's possible how nice it feels to to use a graphical interface on the Atari when you have a nice feeling mouse and uh, thank you very very much um, to Pete and to Vili for sending me one of these and um, it's really very much appreciated and I hope I can give some sort of feedback um help in some way with testing yeah so th thank you very much for watching and uh if you if you enjoyed it do give it a thumbs up and uh if you want to subscribe please do that that helps a lot and thanks to everyone who has done so and, and also for donations etc uh, all highly appreciated and don't forget you can follow me on odyssey now as well so yeah thanks again for watching and i hope you enjoyed this first look at the mouster and uh, all being well, I'll see you again in the next video. So, bye-bye for now.